Today I'm chatting with Nick Wilton, who is an artist, teacher, founder of the Art to Life, um, a whole movement, and CVP. So it's great to meet you. Now, two, this time two years ago, I was about to embark on your free Art to Life workshops, and then I did CVP, which was amazing. It was in lockdown, so it was an amazing time to do it. But for anyone who doesn't, who's never heard of Art to Life and never heard of CVP, the Creative Visionary Programme, can you just tell them a little bit about what it is? Well, yeah, so, um, so it basically it's, it's an approach um, to creativity, really, uh, that, that I, early on, I, so I've been an artist my whole life and trying to sort it out and figure out, you know, get get it so I could keep doing this. Um, and early on, I started teaching a workshop, uh, just, just, just get out of the studio, really. And I just thought, well, I'll teach people kind of the things that have been helpful for me, you know, looking at my own notes. And what I discovered was the way that I'm approaching this, uh, principles of art making and uh, the, the way I teach it and the, and the way I thought about it was personal, but it turns out that it was very helpful for others. And, and people were able in these early workshops to make just such amazing progress, you know, like much faster than I had done. Um, and many of them had not, were just interested in art. They hadn't ever done this. So that's basically what started this many years ago. And I kept working on this process. And now that's really what I teach. So it's a whole approach to creativity and, and it leverages life. Um, the principles of, of life making, good life making are also uh, related to art making. This idea that we need to, we can't make exciting art if, if our life is kind of stuck in places. So it all kind of connects, but that's really what it is. It's, a, it's an approach. It's a, an approach to creativity that, um, you know, for discovering and igniting the art, which is in everybody if, if they're interested in looking. So just you saying that, actually, and I, it, I was only thinking about it today. Of It's the Creative Visionary Program. It doesn't say art in that. I mean, would it, would it work for any kind of creativity, that the process and the approach, do you think? Or is it really just art, art that you want? It's, to it's yes, so it's, I, yeah, and it's, I'm glad you noticed that because, yes, we use paint as a way to learn this process, um, but it, it does not mean that you, this applies to any kind of thing that you're interested in making. How, how do you figure out what it is you wanna make and, and, and what, what are you drawn to? Really the emphasis that I put on, uh, it, you know, that I'm underlining constantly is getting the individual, the artist to pull out of themselves what it is that they are inspired to make. How do you follow the breadcrumbs of, of your own thoughts and desires? How do we start paying attention to this in our life and our art? And, and, and then where do we go from that? What's a process that we can use uh, to, to grow this as quickly and as easily um, and as powerfully as possible? Um, so, so no, it's, it's, it's completely, it, it relates to writing, it relates to photography. I mean, it's generally a creative expression, but the principles I teach relate to gardening as much as they do to cooking. Uh, you know, it's about becoming alive. What makes you feel alive? And that is, uh, that's the whole key to, to, those are the clues that you need to follow. We all need to follow in our life and, and if we want to make powerful personal art. So I want to come back to CVP, but I'm just thinking for you, is spirituality quite important then? Because it's, it, it feels quite a spiritual. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. Yes. You know, your life, how, and at what point did that, you make that personal shift that, art and your life are connected and is it is it a spiritual thing is it what how did that happen for you well you know there's many 
definitions of spirit, but really what we're talking about is soul. And, and this is, you know, one of the underlying principles that, you know, I teach. I mean, there's art making principles, value, design, color, texture, but there's also risk and soul. And those pieces um, are very much, uh, you know, what need to be paid attention to. What is the innermost, uh, what's the essence of, what, of who you are and, and what you're after? So yes, it is spirit. We, our intuition, I believe, um, is, is what needs to be called forward. Um, and, in, and, you know, and this is tricky to sort out because let's say we want to make art. Well, we have to learn to make mix colors and there's all kinds of left brain activities. There's all kinds of information we need, which just that alone is, you know, all art school and all of that. But it's, it's more important to be learning how to pull out what it is inside of ourselves. What is what's a yes what's how do we discern what it is we need to to make in this life you know it's the unfolding of ourselves is what we're involved in it happens for some of us to be demonstrated by art by making art for other people maybe they're going to do it in a law practice i don't know but all i know is the art part of this thing that that it's art making is the process of becoming ourselves and when you start framing it that way suddenly it's not so important really how you know what other people are doing or that maybe you're not particularly as advanced as you want it to be really this is your journey and the sooner you start seeing it that way um the the sooner you can kind of drop into it and and start discerning what it is where you need to go and what you need to make and that mostly is intuition we already know where we need to go um, but sometimes the the sort of left brain, the busyness of our lives and, and the expectations and the limiting beliefs can get in our way. So a big part of our, my programs, as you know, is unpacking that, taking care of those uh, barriers, those blocks to who we think we can become um, so we can become it, right? The art is just an artifact of, of our progress to, towards our becoming, you know, in a sense. So I have to ask, what was the single biggest risk you've taken in your art? Um, well, sometimes if we're not willing to take the risk, which I wasn't, um, things come along that, you know, I, I believe we're, we're here to learn things and, <laughs> and, they're hard and it's different from everyone. And for myself, it was learning that what I needed to make, what I dreamed of doing was possible. I believed or I, I fantasized that, that I, I was an artist. And it sounds ridiculous because I, this is obviously what I do, but it's, it's not lost on me that I, I did not have the gumption or the or the confidence to really step into it. I, I, I stayed, I played rather small, kind of. I was creating art in a, in a commercial sense for many, many years. Um, I wanted to think that maybe one day if I had saved up enough money that I could maybe do art in a way full time and just make what I want and really explore what's possible for me. But I didn't really believe that I could could just move into that that i you know i, I, I you know uh, but but what happened for me was that my circumstances and some of the challenges that all hit at once i had i lost all my financial certainty i you know had a whole made off type situation the the my marriage fell apart uh, i lost a whole business i was stripped down to all that I had really was my art. And I, that's all I had. So I just, I just leaned into it in a way that I never had. And that, that changed everything. That's the day Art to Life was born was when I 
ran out of options. So um, I would love to say that I'm a very risky person. I believe I am, but I was um, I was presented with I didn't have a choice. You know, I didn't. I only had one thing to hang on to, and and thankfully it was my art, and it and it taught me not only that this is achievable, but it 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 taught me how to coach because I, I know what's possible now. And that's, that's, and that's what I've been involved in. I love the process of, of working with people and seeing uh, in others uh, what, what's possible and, and it is possible. And so, um, but I'm pretty risk tolerant, um, but uh, I, I feel like, man, I, I was just, uh, I was reduced. My life was really reduced down to, to just the essentials and then I got the lesson. So sometimes you have to be kind of forced into it in a way. You know, that's that was for me. And, you know, yeah. I think, you know, we go along and we put up with things and we tolerate things. And at a certain point, you're just like, when, when, when am I gonna do this? Yeah. What like I, I cannot keep postponing. I cannot keep what like it's life's happening now and sometimes it takes a certain circumstances it's always different for everybody uh for me i think i'm such a dunderhead i had to have a lot of things happen all at once and <laughs> things had to get really really hard nice. but um it's just been an amazing journey uh that has come out of you know that sometimes i feel like there's a relationship between the difficulties we go through and the progress we get to make because of that and for me it was fast and furious and it and it's still going and i i'm just so grateful so if somebody was um is watching this and thinking do i um sign up for the the free art to life workshops and then maybe think about cvp what I imagine you get a, a lot of feedback from people like me who've done the course, who loved it. And um, what are the three things that you reckon maybe from all of the people who, who you've spoken to that are the three main benefits that somebody sort of signing up and doing the course yeah. might get from it? You know, it's, it's a challenging it's thing, right? Thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, <laughs> the the model or the system of like you know we do a free thing i put a tremendous amount of effort into it um you know this year uh you know on the 14th of february uh, and you know people can join my email list or whatever we have a four or five day free workshop and this is a, a huge part of the year for me this is um and my team this we are teaching thousands of people art and we're teaching some really really cool important information and it's it's a sampling really it's it's a lot of of what i teach and and it and and people can can i if it resonates for people and it and it does for many people um it helps people uh sort of get unstuck when they can see this art making it's it's a sampling of this approach so you know most people uh are going to participate in this and they're not going to maybe continue but they gain a foothold in their art in a more significant way and that's i just know that if you know if if i can show somebody some things that can be helpful i mean really helpful um, a, a tiny fraction of those people who who come along for this free workshop um, uh, will end up wanting to go deeper like yourself, you know, because there's a lot to this. What we're teaching is how to get unstuck, right? This is one of the major challenges that artists have. They It goes really well for a while and we're making something and then we get stuck. You know, I mean, it's the it's those moments when it's working that keeps us going. But I'm interested in showing people how to do this more and more and more um, in their practice. This is this is the goal to be like unstuck all the time. So the free workshop is really addressing that. But what is needed, what we what's provided in the creative visionary program, which it's a 12 week program that um, it is 
we're giving these principles uh, a really working body of information. I mean, all the information I feel that is essential that most artists, I mean, I, you know, it's really patchy at best uh, what what people were given uh, in art school or just what we've been pieced together. No one ever explained it to me in a way like this is what you need. <laughs> this is the art making information you need in order to do this. Like you just got to learn this. It's not impossible. So it's all the art making information. It's really deep and it's very thorough. Um, uh, you know, in terms of color and design and all these principles that there's a hierarchy, <laughs> right? So there's all of that art making information, but there's also a process and teaching a process, giving people information about how, how do you set this thing up so you can show up and do this properly and, and enjoy it and keep going, you know, how, like really, like, what does it look like? You know, what's, what are some of the ways that, you know, what are some of the information that people can do um, in the day-to-day -day practical way? That was never taught to me uh, ever. And I had to figure it out. It took way, way too long. So I'm a big believer in showing people like, do this, try this, set this up. This is how you can be more successful. This is how you can make art in a more efficient way and teach yourself, right? Um, how do you do that? How can you stay, remain unstuck? And then a lot, a lot of another piece of this, the third piece of this is community. How we um, need and work with others uh, and share what we're doing and, and give each other feedback so we can remain objective about what we're making. And there, there's a whole piece of that that comes in. So the Creative Visionary Program leverages those three pieces, all the art making information, a process, a viable process, as well as a community which um, is what has, has rescued me, um, me having this conversation with you and getting to be around inspiring artists that are learning alongside. We're all learning, we're all moving to forward together. And that's, that's uh, really the, the sort of anchor points of the Creative Visionary Program. And, and it works, uh, it's, it's powerful. And as you know, it, it, um, it, it's, it's transformative. It is a transformative process. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I spend a lot of time talking to artists now as well. <laughs> and it was a revelation to me how what, what an enormous online community there was and how friendly people were as well and willing to share. And I think you model that really well that, you know, I think that that seemed to be something that was at the core of art yeah. life generally was sharing, which is not something that you always find in in some art communities you know, that I haven't anyway. Yeah, no, I, that was missing for me too. That, that was really frustrating, you know, yeah, and, and that's yeah. definitely important. Yeah. So you run um, quite a lot of things. I, I'm just wondering what your day-to-day -day life, so you, I know that you're about to get started with the free workshops, then art to uh, then CVP. What else, do, you know, what else do you do? What does your timetable look like? And Yeah, you, yeah, so in because you you must be pretty busy <laughs> yeah i mean um you know i'm putting ourselves in and aligning ourselves and being involved with things that bring us alive for me it's having this conversation for me it's getting to witness what others are making i find it just the coolest thing i i love seeing i just got off a off of a um, podcast interview with an artist who's just now like finally dropping into what she she did the creative visionary program but she's just like she's just in it and it's that first blush where it's like oh my god <laughs> you know i'm i'm getting this like this is and and it shows in the work that's what's so cool as artists we get to we get a we get to have an artifact of our progress so it's measurable and and i love that so i stay involved in the things like this my own art making and then experiencing what others are making because it it all feeds back into itself it's like this wonderful kind of feedback loop so the things that i try to stay focused on are 
um, teaching and, and being around artists and seeing what they're making and then making my own art. And, and that's kind of, and creating content that can be helpful. Um, so how I just time, blow, yeah, yeah. How much time do you spend painting? Is it, is it possible to say, or is it, you, yeah, well, uh, you, you know, I'm not, painting at certain times of the year or do you always, yeah. So I just had a writing? show, right. So I just had a show. And so, yeah, so um, I've good. been painting a lot for that and it was a lot at night. Um, I have, I have my time. I'm, I'm able to paint quite directly now and quite quickly because I'm able to drop into it. I don't need to, I, there's not a lot of struggle. I mean, this is what I teach. So I'm happily, uh, you know, reporting that, that I'm, I've learned a lot, you know, and, and it's what I teach. So I can do a tremendous amount in a couple hours. And, and, and I think it's because I'm having conversations like this and I'm, I'm never really very far away from my art making. My art making is, it looks like talking a lot. It looks like looking a lot. It looks like making art. It's all part of what makes me feel alive and being in it. There's a fire that, that, that there's a, the fire of, of our creativity, of, of your soul, of that part of yourself that is, that's engaged, that's strong, that's grounded. That's what I'm channeling and that's what I'm teaching. And, and so as long as I stay in that, um, then it doesn't really matter so much what I'm doing. I just, I gauge everything on what that energy, what the energy I get from it. So a few hours of art making, sometimes it's all day, but you know, right now I'm looking at, you know, how, how do I, how do I communicate these ideas in a way that we can draw a lot, we can teach a lot of people in the free workshop. That's the main thing. We teach thousands of artists during that week. And that is the benefit of what we get to do because of the programs we run. We can afford to like really create an amazing free program. So what do you think about when you're doing your painting? Um, the fire, the fire and, and what brings me alive? What, what part of this work, where does it need to go next? What's, what's really resonating, discerning, learning how to recognize that and then going towards it in a more deeper, more vulnerable, more open-hearted way. It's about opening. It's, it's about vulnerability and, and, uh, just the, I just know that if I can grow more in that, that the work is going to become more and, and more stronger. Now, it, it doesn't maybe resonate with as many people, perhaps, but uh, for those who it does, they, they get it and, and they want it. And so that's, that's really gratifying as well, you know, that uh, I first am pleasing myself and just just really showing up for it, you know? Um, that's what I think about. Is this mark truthful? Am, 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 I, am I phone, you know, am I mailing it in? Or am I, am I actually like painting what I don't know? Am I going to those outer edges of what is possible for me? Is it, do I feel alive in this? Am I, is there risk involved here? It's what I teach. And, and, and I have to learn this constantly for myself and I have to, practice this it's my practice and and then the teaching comes out of that it's sort of odd but the art making informs everything and do you have any blocks or have you got beyond that have you learned so effectively you know oh to, or no do, i do you get blocks and then if you do yes i them, i totally do i i think i'm a bit more i'm quicker at realizing that i'm posing, <laughs> you know, I'm quicker to point out to myself that like, that's, come on, no, <laughs> you know, to, come on, step it up. I don't waste a lot of time as much as time. I would paint on things for weeks, years ago that, that were kind of okay. And, and like kind of okay is not, is not um, acceptable anymore. So you know, I mean, I just did a show and, 
you know, some of the work's kind of not that great, you know, and not as strong as other pieces. A few of them are really good though. And that gives me hope. So I'm not any different than anybody else, but I, I think I'm, it's quicker. And, and that comes from experience and that comes from having, uh, uh, you know, information that, that you get to acquire and, and, you know, mentorship or being coached is so very valuable. What I've learned from other people, uh, you know, trying to figure this all out yourself is, is a very slow process. Unfortunately, I did most of it early on myself and it took a lot of years of struggle. It does not have to be that way. Uh, I, I see what, what can be given to people so they have the resources so this thing can really uh, take off quicker and sooner. But yeah, the, the, the art making is, it's supposed to be a struggle. It, it, there is going to be that. That is the beauty of it. There's a shadow side to this that we have to uh, go through in order to make our own personal authentic work. That's what we're here to do. Uh, you know, I don't care whether you make art or you have some other thing you're involved in. There's a, there's a, a learning and an unfolding of ourselves that often uh, it, it, it comes from a fire. It comes from, 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 from a difficulty and a challenge. The rate of our learning is connected to the rate of the, the sort of severity of the difficulty. It really is. Learning and progressing requires uh, challenge. And once you kind of know that in art making, once that becomes, oh, okay, it's not as scary, but uh, that never goes away, I, I don't think. <laughs> you, I was interested, you said in your show that you thought some pieces were stronger than others. What makes it good? And how do you know it's good? Yes, and I love this question. And this is really, um, you know, at the heart of it, right? If, you know, how, how do we, how do, you know, so. Yeah, especially so with abstract it, art, because I think a lot of people struggle to, to, to find any kind of meaning in that. Yeah, it, it's, it's um, you know, I talk a lot about discernment and discernment is something that, we all have within us it's it's a muscle it's a it's the inner inner knowing of ourselves and without being too wooey i mean you know sometimes we can be in a situation and we're like god this is not this does not no i don't think this feels right and we leave now artists have a, a high level of sensitivity and and it, it this is why we're artists by the way you know we have this we we this loud sounds to us are things music can be too loud for example or or conditions can be in a certain way that it, we can't really be in that space and we have to leave i i know this uh, about myself and i know this about so many so many artists there's just a, a sensitivity and that sensitivity is just a connection to our inner self and that discernment is something that it doesn't, it's not a checklist, it's just a knowing. And there's an uptick tick in our energy. If, if I hold two things in front of you, it could be any two things, a fork and a knife. And I said, which, which do you prefer? There's no rhyme or reason why logically you would prefer one over the other, but everyone would know. Everyone just, I don't know, I just, I like that one. If I have to choose, I like that one. That's the beginning of di cultivating this discernment of yourself. It's like you have this inner pilot light, the inner, inner sense of yourself that says yes to things more than other things. And when you make a mark or when you listen to somebody, there's, there's a knowing, there's a, it's like, yes, that kind of resonates. I mean, that's why I do this free workshop so people can kind of grok it and go, yeah, actually, what he's, I get it. I, I, I understand this, what he's saying or how he's saying it. Um, and they can move towards it. And, and that's what we're learning is moving towards what it is that's yeses for ourselves. When I look at my work, I can just sense it. Um, and it, sometimes it takes a while. Certainly a, a show provides this. You send all this work off. You've just been killing yourself doing it. Then you walk in the space a couple of weeks later and you see all the work. Um, some, then, then I can, I know you can just feel which ones are, are speaking to me. 
And it's not that necessarily they're better or worse. It's just some of them, some of the things are speaking more to where you need to go next. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. It's like, this is where you're growing. This is the edge of where you need to go. This part, something about this, pay attention, Nick. Feel that, do you feel that juice, that energy? That's that fire in this part. That's what we as artists need to cultivate. And it is a cultivation. Our discern, our ability to discern is, is strengthened by using it. And that's the practice. We're learning what is yes, and we're learning what is no for ourselves. And, and that cultivates courage. amazing yeah. results. Pardon me? You need a lot of courage for that, don't you? Because I know from free speaking from experience, I've thought I felt pulled in one direction and then also had a little voice saying, yeah, but it doesn't look like anything I've kind of seen anyone else doing that's any good, re regarded as good. Yes, and yes, it's, it's, it's tricky, job. right? We don't get to know ahead of time what our art or the thing, you know, what, where it, what it's going to be like. We can sense it a little by looking at other people's work. But yes, there's trust. That's where the risk comes in, uh, that to, to just follow what feels right, even though it doesn't necessarily look like anything you've seen before. And this is something that, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about in the Creative Visionary Program, helping people understand this, that this is super, super important, uh, that this is a necessary step and, and it, it will make sense uh, in, in time, but at first blush, uh, it, you, it feels like a stranger. Um, you know, it's like trying on a coat that's too big or something. It's like where you need to grow, um, what, you're painting what you don't know. I mean, that's challenging. I mean, that's, that's hard to do, you know, but that's exactly what we need to do in order to, to get this thing in a, in a powerful place. I mean, to make art that feels like ourselves. That's exactly what we need to do. And that's what Art to Life is all about. It's, it's an approach. That was great. I've got a, I have got a question just for me, actually, if that is yeah. okay. If, if you like painting lots and lots of different things, so in different styles, how, how can you be confident enough? And how do you think? Well, here's, no, here's to focus on this. Yeah, right. You don't need to artificially do anything. Um, I think if you're being called to do this and try that, that's what's needing to happen. Just, just get into it and pay attention. It, there is no way you will keep doing a whole bunch of different things. If you do three things, and let's say we laid them out on the table right now, and, and I looked at them with you, I'd say, which one of these, which one kind of like was more potent for you? There's always one. And what about that, you know, that thing where you were kind of imitating this artist or you're trying to do a more realistic thing, you know, and sometimes it's maybe not as clear and you just need to do more. But generally, working in a series of things, as disparate as they might be, will something will emerge that is more, uh, you know, just has a little bit more juice for you. And that's the discernment piece I was talking about. And so then you kind of do that. And, and sort of try that on and go that way. It's okay to, to sort of like narrow things down based on that. Know that you're, you're, it's not a life sentence. You get to do something. So what? You do some things for a couple months and then you move into something else, you know? Um, yeah. it's, not, you're, it's not like you're locked in, but knowing that there's something, even if you can't articulate it, it's like, I'm just, I'm going to try this thing a bit again, because that one had a little bit of, there's something about that, you know, yeah. I can recognize it, by the way, like often I can look at someone's work and I just looked at so many people's work and I'll go, what about that? How do you feel about that part? And they'll go, yeah, that's my favorite part. So it's not, it's not a huge mystery. It, it usually is pretty clear. Um, and that's where getting feedback and, you know, sharing your work with others makes, makes a difference. What about art in general? When you walk into a gallery with lots of other artists' paintings or, you know, a museum, what do you think, is there anything that makes you, uh, you know, what makes good art? 
in general? You know, yes, I mean, and, and I can, when I look at work and I feel the, that, that commitment to their vision, their, 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 they're on the edge of their seats doing whatever they're doing, Mm. I can feel that. I feel that risk. I feel that energy. And then it, it's, it's more rare. <laughs> you know, it's not that common. Um, but when you see, uh, you know, work that, you know, often it's the work that we love that, that you know, that's why we love it. But it's 1000% that person. When we see somebody's work and it's of them, there's this, it's powerful, it's inspiring, but in a way it, it reminds us what's possible for ourselves. And, and this, is, this is why it's so cool for me and I think for all of us to see and witness what others are making and, and the successes they're having because it's just a big, huge um, permission slip. I look for the vulnerability, I look for exactly what we're talking about. What, what, are they on the edge here? What, you know, there's risk involved and, and that's a huge part of it. Like I, you can feel it, you can sense it in the work. That's what, that's what amazing art is. There's, there's openness to it, there's spaciousness to it, there's risk, there's uncertainty. That makes for amazing art that you can just keep looking at and looking at and looking at. Right, I usually end with what I call shorts, and they're designed as one word answers, although nobody tends to stick to one word. Um, is that okay? So we... Sure. Yeah, okay. So what's your favorite color? It's certain combinations of color. It's a color next to a color. Ooh, so, so I would say blues one. right now, but, okay. but it, it's, it's, the, it's the context of color that creates my favorite colors. Which is most important, line, color, design, or something else? What's most important is what lights you up. So what's most important, what lights you up most out of those? I would say right now line, because it's new and, I, and I'm integrating this in my work. And you know, just, the ability for a line to move around a picture and cross boundaries and go different places. There's a certain freedom to that that I'm really into right now. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite medium? I think acrylic right now. I'm, I still love it. I love the, the speed and the flexibility. Uh, so I would say the built acrylic as I, I can just change my mind and move so freely in it yeah favorite tool i remember one um one memorable video that you did where you were using a brick but i'm, I'm yeah <laughs> yeah but well, what's your favorite tool something that you can't leave her you know you'd always have on you i think probably a trowel hmm. because it allows me to to change the mark and it brings a spontaneity once I've painted uh, to the mark making. I can't control it all the way. So I might paint with a paintbrush, but then I, I use a trowel, it, I lose control. And, and that just has a quality about it that, that is exciting. Okay, um, big or small? Oh, uh, they work for me. I paint small all the time, and then I paint really, really large. So it's, right. I cannot do the one without the other. They are, the difference between tiny 12 inch by 12 inch and eight foot by eight foot is where my, uh, where the energy lies for me. I do both. Um, quick or slow? But you said you've been painting pretty quickly at the moment. Yes, it's probably quick, but, but slow in thinking and learning and slow in the marination that is all happening all the time, but in execution, quick. Um, ooh, if you had to choose teacher or artist? Um, I think I'm a teacher 
and I, and I think that, uh, that I'm teaching myself first and foremost. And I'm very fortunate that, that that information can be helpful. That was a surprise to me, but, but, but first and foremost, I'm, I'm learning, trying to learn. Uh, I was going to say actually, so teaching and learning, I think. Yes, um, I'm always a student. I'm just a friggin' student, always. What marks do you most like to make at the moment? Um, the marks that I make are in, the, it's all in relationship to the one that came before. I like to, to, to make marks based on what feels appropriate what feels different. I, if I'm making a certain small mark, I tend to then want to make a giant large mark. If I'm making a thin mark, I wanna make a really fat mark. I wanna push and see the range of what's possible. So I, I don't ever just glom onto one little thing and keep doing it. There's no favorites. It's, it's, the, it's the combination of many that is the pro is that that's my favorite you know it's it's that it's it's like a dance and what have you learned about yourself from your art the 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 the, the shadow part the parts that are in the dark that there's that there's this love that's in all of us um like there's the, this inner child and the young parts of us and, and the broken parts of us and like it's all okay and it all needs to be leveraged to bring out, like the, the growth happens by pulling all of us forward. And, and that's what I've learned. I've learned that all of me is, is acceptable, all of me. And, it, you know, it's not that I'm, I, you know, I, I'm this, you know I, I suffer from not being confident in all the things that everyone does, but, but in the, my best moments, and especially I get this from teaching and seeing it in others, I think we are, we're love and we, we, we get to do this. This is why we're here. And we, we get to show all of ourselves and that makes incredible art. And that's the win. Now, I remember in CVP, you mentioned at some point that you had a bucket list and you wanted to go and see, was it mountain gorillas or just gorillas? <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you been to see them yet? No, maybe you don't get to do all the things, but you need to, you need to be aware of those. One of the categories in, in my sketchbook is adventure. Uh, yeah. Adventure in art, adventure in travel, adventure in experiencing and seeing things that that you need and want to see so um just before we finish if somebody was to look at a piece of your work in a hundred years time what are you wanting them to to know or feel or sense about you and your experience of being here that they saw that i was that they felt that aliveness that they felt that wildness that that I was on it. That they somehow get that that's available for them too, or that the or that that liveness in them recognizes that in me in my work. That's great. Thank you very much. So, where can people see? How can people find you? Find art to life. Oh, just you know, arttolife.com. Uh, get on our mailing list. Um, we are starting the free workshop. It starts on February fourteenth. But uh, being on our mailing list, if you go to arttolife.com and um, just, you know, every Sunday I have a vlog that comes out. So I'm, it's just my practice of teaching. Most of it is free. Um, so there's a lot that we're, I'm just involved teaching a lot, a lot of people. Um, and a couple times a year we do programs and this, it's in the spring. It's an entire season of art making, uh, the Creative Visionary Program. Is, is a time of year for myself and many, many artists now where we're drawing a line in the sand and we're going for it. And so uh, the free workshop is the beginning of that season. And um, I'm just really excited. We've got some new and different things we'll be doing this year. Each year it gets better, 
Um, so I would come along and check that out, um, but get on our mailing list. Uh, if you just go to arttolife.com, you can find out ways to do that. Art to Life, right, and I'll put some links in for people as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank, thanks so much. Uh, you know, it's, uh, again, talking about this and, and um, I just learned so much, you know, I learned so much. So I appreciate your interest. I mean, this journey that we're all on, this creative journey, it's, it isn't like a career in anything else. It's who has this? I mean, what it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, you go to medical school, there's a real prescribed path, <laughs> you know, it's really clear. But this art making thing that many of us, not a huge portion of the world, but many, many, many are chasing something down that they don't entirely know what it is but nonetheless they they're motivated to do it that is crazy interesting to me because i am one of those people and i gain insight to what i'm doing by talking to others and what do you think that urge is i think there's an honesty i i think there's a a kind of sensitivity for you know to the world but to yourself that, that there's a calling that if you are quiet enough um to listen that it's inside of you that it's you know your soul is speaking to you constantly in those quieter moments when we can hear it and and if we answer it i think it's the most remarkable thing and and what comes out of answering that and the the art that's made from that and the and the and the contribution of becoming yourself and showing what that looks like so others can can do that i think that's what we're here to do actually